So in this class, quickly, we're going to look at how to log into our app. In previous classes, we looked at, you know, how to save to chat preferences, you know, how to save user information to, um, to a Firebase database using the hash map. So in this class, let's just look at how to log into an app, right? Because that's more like the most important thing, okay? So what we want to do is when we log in, we want to, when our login is successful, we want to jump right into our main activity, right? Okay, so the first thing we got to do, uh, let's always change this to app compact activity. So we resolve this by bringing in Android support. Okay, so that's done. The first thing we need to do after this is to declare our, is to define our buttons and of course our text input layout and grab a reference of it from our login.xml file all right so to do that i'll just go ahead and define test impute layout test impute layout okay let's resolve this let's bring in android support design okay so now i can now say rather email test email test and I'm gonna bring in test input layout password test and we have a button so I declare a button as well and call that login button right okay if we need to so if we're going to be using snackbar then we need to add a coordinator layout to our Login .sml file, right? So, okay, bring out my solution explorer and load our login file. And we did this as well, you know, when we were, you know, doing um, user registration. So, what to do here is very simple. We just go ahead and grab Android support dot design dot widget dot ordinator layer okay and also we'll copy this and paste it here Okay, so the next thing we need to do is uh, the coordinator layer doesn't have orientation, so let's change that and add an ID instead so that we can be able to reference it in our login activity. ID, I call this root view. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is to pack the entire code, the entire design that we had initially into a new la linear layout. All right okay of course some attributes so let's add some attributes we need to add layout height which is going to be match parent and we need to add layout width which will also be which will also be match parent so the next thing we need to add will be so the next thing we need to add is the orientation. The orientation needs to be vertical. Then let's carry, let's suction the entire code inside of it. The initial design we had. Bam, and everything works well, right? So we're gonna save this and go back into our login activity. Okay, so let's define a new coordinator layer we'll call it root view so we are done so now the next thing we need to do is is to reference the text input layout and the button that we defined to the ones we have in our layout file okay so to do that we say email text equal to text input layout as a cast then we'll do find view by id resource dot id 
dot email test. Then for password test, we have test include layout, find view by ID, resource dot ID dot password test. So let's get our root view. Root view will be equal to coordinator layout find view by id resource dot id dot root view so the last will be our button we'll call it login button right which will be equal to login button so we are done and so let's add a click event handler for our button so now so we've done with that so we want that when we click login that's when the login um that's when we so now the next thing is to grab our email and password from our email text and password sex so to do that we need to define um, some variables that we use to take in the value. So we define string email and password. Email will be equal to email test, email test dot edit test. Remember that this is a test input layer. So it has an edit test inside of it. And we have password equal to password test dot edit test dot test so now we have that of course we, we want to do some caveats all right we have to set some caveat we don't want someone to send in a wrong email or don't even send an email at all we should be able to tell you that yeah what you're putting in is wrong so to do that let's set some caveats with some if statement so if email so if email doesn't contain Add character means that is wrong, all right. Okay, we're gonna use a snack bar to inform you that what you provided, that the email you provided is invalid, all right. So, root view. Tell you to please provide a valid email, right? So the duration is going to be short. We're going to show it, and after which return. So the next caveat we're going to check is is our password. If our password is less than eight characters, we're going to have to tell you to provide provide a valid password. Okay, so if this checks out, we need to now execute our login, all right? So now to execute our login, of course, we need to first of all initialize our Firebase, and we have the code to do that in our registration activity. So we just jump right into this place and grab it. So this is the code for initializing our Firebase. So I paste it here. Of course, we need to bring in resolve some things. We need to bring in some namespaces. So we're going to use Firebase. So we now need to define a new Firebase authentication too. So we don't need this. And we don't need this. Right? So we just need an instance of a Firebase authentication. Right? So we have to define this to be global. So we say Firebase auth. Okay. To bring this in as well. M auth. So this is the instance of our authentication. This instance of our authentication. So where we initialized the, our Firebase, we're going to say our M auth will be equal to Firebase auth dot instance okay if firebase is already initialized we just grab the instance of the authentication so now let's execute our login to do a login it's more similar to you know the way we created a new user as well 
So we're gonna say we're gonna say m of dot sign in sign in with email and password and we're gonna pass it an argument of, with our email and our password okay so now that won't be all we need some callbacks right we need to add some callbacks so when so when the signing is successful so this means that we need to implement this interface right if you guys remember we created a tax completion listener all right here that which which i said we can always reuse so we now have to create a reference of this particular class and we will use it to implement this interface right so what we're going to do here is we're going to define a new task completion listener okay i'm going to call it task completion listener equal to new task completion listener right so with this we can hand we can use it to implement the necessary interface so now we'll add for failure the failure listener of which we will use the same class to handle it so now we need to add some events for failure and for success within our task completion listener so to do that we're going to say task completion listener dot success so if our login is successful this whatever command we put within this code block will execute all right so what we want to do when the user login is successful is to start our main activity all right so we'll now say start activity type of main activity when our login failed we want to inform the user that login has failed so can i say snagbar.make root view login field duration show all right so guys this is it it's quite simple and straightforward okay so that's all that we need to do here we're gonna clean things up okay so i think that's all we need to do for now right so we gotta go to our splash screen to ensure that our login activity starts first okay so now we're gonna need to run it so let's test it okay so we now need to provide the details of um, some of the users that were registered in the past so we can now use it to see if logging will be successful okay so we are going to actually use the information of Edward to see if we can log in we're gonna try a wrong password and to see if we and to see the response and we're gonna try the right password and to see what we're gonna happen all right okay so we are now into the app so let's try logging in with edward at gmail.com all right and let me try to put a wrong password you can see the caveat that we said it asked us to provide a valid password right so let's let me go ahead and put the valid password but it's wrong okay seems we have an error okay seems we didn't we didn't initialize our firebase guys that's why it's always very good to go through your code before you you know hit the ground running so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly call the initialize firebase here we didn't call it we didn't initialize our firebase of course everything is going to be null so now that i've done that let's go ahead and run okay so our app is deploying so our app is loading up okay so let's log in with this user like we intended to do before 
and the password let's just use something wrong but valid login so login failed so now let's use the correct password which is one into eight places one two three four five six seven eight click login bam as you can see login was successful so guys this is just how to use firebase authentication to you know to log into the app okay so guys hope you enjoy the class i need to encourage you keep going okay i know we've really been you know on the surface for quite a long time but we're gonna you know, get into the serious stuff just a bit after now all right so guys thank you for being here and let's go let's build this thing together see you in the next class